I'm from the municipality of Örebro in Sweden. Uh, Sweden's sixth largest town with about 100,000 inhabitants, so Sweden is pretty small. Uh, my name is Björn Hagström, I'm in charge of web stuff basically. Uh, and uh, I had the idea for our open, uh, first open data set. Uh, the PSI directive was turned into Swedish law in the middle of last year. And the awareness of the issue is uh, pretty low basically on all levels in, in uh, government and, and basically in society too. Uh, there are a few interested parties, uh, dedicated individuals uh, pursuing it like me and a lot of developers wanting data to build ser services. Um, and our open data project, uh, this is our first data set as I said. Uh, it's, I, I see it as a start, I hope it will be followed by many more and uh, I know there are a few more on the way uh, that I'm helping along. Uh, and I, um, I had the idea because I wanted to, to try this open uh, data thing and see if it uh, led to something good. And um, I asked my boss for permission to do it and he said yes. Uh, the cost was pretty low and, and uh, we started with points of interest uh, on our, from our web map. Not the that map data, but uh, the points of interest and uh, the different layers we have there. Um, uh, the, the reason we started there was because I'm the owner of the web map, so it's very easy to, to, to discuss with the person in charge, because this was me. Uh, we use open layers for the map and uh, our map solution that we, we the developed from open layers are used by, by uh, several other agencies too, so, so this, uh, the solution can be reused by them as well. The total cost was about 2,000 euros, not a lot of money for something that, like this. Uh, and it's updated automatically, so there is no, um, uh, no management costs. The TCO is very low. When we add a new layer of points of interest, uh, the, the, the open data opens, um, uh, updates automatically. And that's the link to, to the the page is in Swedish, so I think we we'll skip that right now. And uses, well, heck if I know, uh, I don't care. The, the two basic answers, it's not uh, my job. Uh, I don't decide what to use the data for. Uh, my job is to, to, to make it available for the people with ideas. So that's how I see it. But the one example I used uh, when, when uh, advocating for this uh, in, uh, in the organization was uh, real estate agents might be able to show where there are schools, uh, preschools, near objects uh, that they have a sale. Uh, the future then, uh, I keep lobbying for it internally. Uh, I want us to have more open data sets and uh, this, the price helps a lot. Uh, there'll be some, um, people have been talking about open data since we got the award, so it's a positive effect. We're uh, switching to GeoServer, I hope, to get a more flexible API where you can get data in more different formats. I, I don't know if it's a good thing. Uh, our um, uh, developers say it's a good thing, so I, I trust them. Uh, a key issue uh, when we buy systems is what I hope this will be. We can we'll ask the question, what data should be open? It should not be open. That's a question we, we should be asking um, the people that want to sell uh, IT systems to us. And uh, everything else should be open. open. That's what I hope to achieve in a few years' time. And uh, one revelation for us uh, during this uh, project was uh, internal uses. Uh, the open data format has been uh, very helpful for us when using the data in our other systems because it's easier to use the open data source than going for the database and writing SQL queries all the time. So uh, that's a revelation for us. So uh, I, I rushed things a bit because uh, we had a the time wasn't uh, what I thought it was, but that's a short presentation of open data and from the municipality of Uruguay. Thank you. Thank you.